While this game may not live up to the quality of Mortal Kombat 9, Mortal Kombat X still refines and improves on what already was a great fighting game mechanic. With each character having three different variations on their arsenal, despite minor changes, these already implemented characters feels different enough to even warrant a character slot, creating the total of 87 characters if you count these different variations. The story mode itself, while not as good as Mortal Kombat 9, still has one of the best story modes in any fighting game, with my only complaint being the somewhat rushed ending. Regardless, pulling off fatalities is still as fun as ever. The online mode while servers at launch is now better than ever. Mortal Kombat X is a very fun fighting game that I'm sure any Mortal Kombat fan would enjoy. Wait a second, base. If I recall from memory, you put Final Fantasy IX on the worst list of 2013. Well, that was true at the time, you also know that opinions can change over time. I've really only disliked the couple of hours I put into when I originally started it. After giving this game another shot, I found the atmosphere to be quite fascinating. The cartoony nature of Final Fantasy IX really stands out compared to the cliché, gloomy, and dark nature of Final Fantasy series. The characters, with the exception of the main character Zidane, I found to be pretty hilarious. Originally I complained about how the characters felt stupid and immature, but after dissecting them more, I found them to be quite endearing and hilarious rather than frustrating. Has there ever been a time where you yourself want to assign Power Ranger roles? Well, now you can with Chroma Squad. Chroma Squad is a tactical RPG similar to games like XCOM or Fire Emblem. You take control of your customized Ranger slash Sentai team and beat up bad guys. Of course, since these Rangers are actors, you have to fulfill requirements such as director notes and fan feedback. So it's a combination of satisfying your audience while beating your little putties in tactical RPG. In most tactical RPGs, and by other tactical RPGs I mean Fire Emblem, the goal is to always kill your enemies. Chroma Squad adds another layer by adding additional required challenges in order to survive. Just simply defeating your opponents is not enough, you gotta show some flash pizzazz, something to keep the viewers interested in seeing why they wanted to watch your content in the first place, rather than just simply releasing the same thing over and over and over again. So, uh, when's the next Totally Predictable Who Can Pass series where Villager is obviously going to pass it, Little Max is obviously going to fail it, and Sonic's gonna suck his dick in depression because he was too slow? That was oddly specific. Never in my YouTube career would I ever think about mentioning a hentai game of all things, but surprisingly, I had a whole lot of fun playing this game. The main gimmick of this game is this Bejewel-like stage, but unlike Bejewel where you can just swipe anything and get points, in Honey Pop, you have to actually think about the moves you make since you're only given a certain amount of them. There are some items that can help you along the way, but you have to unlock them in order to even use them in the first place. And even then, the items can only get you so far as each date you encounter will continuously get harder and harder from there on out. It's a relatively cheap game too, it's like only 10 bucks and I can definitely say it gives you more bang for your buck. More so if you buy it on a Steam sale. And of course, the personality of each girl has something that any guy and or lesbian and or flukogen has something to offer. There's the shy introvert, the sporty girl, the girl next door, a cat. Standing on the edge of the crater. An unfortunate end to a true Metal Gear Solid game after the departure of Hideo Kojima, but if there's any game I'm glad that ends Metal Gear Solid with the dignity it deserves, it's Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. While I personally don't think it's the best by all means, it's still miraculous that this game ended up Game of the Year material despite all the atrocities Konami has made, and the cut content would've made this game even better since really the only downside I can think of this game is the story itself. But everything else improved a lot of the issues I had with Peace Walker and exceeded in expectations to top it off. It's surprisingly fun to do simple tasks like grinding for materials because not every single experience is the same, and I believe that's Metal Gear Solid 5's strong point. It's catering to all players and it's fun to play this game either guns a blazing or traditional stealth. I think it's safe to say that the Metal Gear Solid series had a harsh life. But it's time to say goodbye to one beloved franchise as it ends on quite possibly one of the best Metal Gear games created. Unless Platinum Games develops Metal Gear Rising Revenge 2.
I didn't expect myself to enjoy this game as much as I did, but Project Mirai DX is a very welcoming addition to the Project Diva series. Really, my only complaint I have with this game is that it reuses some tracks from previous Miku games, and the game itself really isn't all that hard. But considering this game is on a handheld, I can see why this game is not as intensive. Freaking Smash Bros. already broke my circle pad, I want to break my D-pad and buttons as well. But aside from that, the game still spices up a lot of the classic Project Diva gameplay, and addition of some of the best music tracks in the game. While not every single song strikes me fancy, I do enjoy the majority that was put out. And while Miku does get the majority of the spotlight, I'm glad that they're actually pushing more of Miku's other vocaloids as well. I mean, holy crap, we got five Mako tracks instead of the abysmal two that we got in the last game? If you're a huge fan of Miku, definitely check this one out. Oh, Cat Icarus, how I'm so glad you recommended the internet to play this game. Viv Rhythm is a simple rhythm game. You press the appropriate buttons to the layout of the stage at the correct beats, and that's all there is to it. It's simple, yet fun. The music selection from what I've been listening to is rather silly, but I do have some favorites, my personal being overflowing emotions. Even if I don't find the music selection to be too stellar, you can actually put your own music into the game provided you have the CD to put it in. This is where Vib Ribbon truly shines, when you use the multitude of infinite possibilities. Of course, this requires an actual physical disc, and I'm not even sure if blank CDs to burn on your disc even exist at this day and age. But still, I have not seen a whole lot of games innovate as much as Viv Ribbon has. This game is available for the PlayStation Network, and if you're into rhythm games, definitely give Viv Ribbon a chance. Practically the only reason to even use your dusty Xbox Kinect, the Dance Central series is surprisingly one of the few motion-based video games I both enjoy and use to lose weight. And these games are not your basic shake your Wii remote randomly to win. You have to move your body to the beat in order to actually truly beat the game. Flawlessly, dancing through an entire song will be the hardest challenge any hardcore gamer can overcome. Seriously, I can pass freaking Ninja Gaiden 2 on the hardest difficulty, but 5-starring OMG on hard? Challenge accepted! The song selection is definitely polarizing for me. While there are some songs I completely despise, there is still a variety of songs I still enjoy. Some I've never even heard before, but eventually warmed up to it. Sure, I can't really recommend everyone to try this out, especially since I know no one who is willing to buy a Kinect for it. But if you're one of those curious adventurers that wants to travel beyond the boundaries, or if you just like dancing, I definitely recommend giving any Dance Central game a chance. I mean, it's not like it's that expensive anyways. The first two games were like 3 bucks each, and the Kinect I bought at a used game store was around 30 bucks. Although I might have gotten actually really lucky with the Kinect. Oh, by the way, anyone want to guess what my favorite dance move is? Backslash! Oh, speaking of which... Godlike. I feel as though if I actually did beat Xenoblade Chronicles, it would have easily made it onto my official best list of 2015. But I think we'll have to wait until next year for Xenoblade Chronicles to show its full life, unless I put Xenoblade Chronicles X instead. But let's not harp on what may come in the future. Instead, let's talk about how Xenoblade Chronicles is a fantastic JRPG. The combat is so much fun. With the power of the Monado, you can perceive the future with the strategy and power you possess. To top it off, the combat system places you in a 3D environment where positioning and spacing is everything in a battle. Not every single battle gets repetitive. Each enemy and boss battle has some sort of weakness and placement that requires the player to figure it out through experimentation. And the characters you interact with are so fun and likable. They even implement a social link system into the game using affinity points, although they can get annoying at times whenever they repeat the same line. It didn't bother me too much, so I didn't really mind at all. I really love this game, and it's a shame that not many people are able to play this game without paying so much money for a used copy, or another console entirely. I really hope that Nintendo releases this game onto the eShop so that many more RPG fanatics can enjoy Xenoblade Chronicles. Ultra! I 
honestly never imagined placing a game like Super Mario 3D World so high on this list, even as an honorable mention. But Super Mario 3D World is a game I could stop playing. I enjoyed every single moment of this game, each level crafted with creativity and replayability. This isn't some kiddie challenge you can complete overnight, and I'm still in the middle of completing the game myself. It's rare for me to really complete any game without motivation, but Super Mario 3D World manages to make me want to beat the game 100% without even forcing me to do so. This is platforming ecstasy, combining the fun level designs of 2D Mario games, but replacing it with a 3D environment. Surprisingly, it's the simplest things that can breed amazing results. 